I'm sure many of us, when we look back over old family photos or photos from our primary school days or secondary school days, there's often a sense of embarrassment. You know, I can't believe I had that haircut. Or when you see uh, an Irish dancing video of yourself when you were like 10 and you go, oh my goodness, oh, look at me, look at the state of me. What am I doing? And that two-step is wrong. And oh, oh no. And, and often it's, it's the case that when we, when we learn something or when we move on, when we look at the fact that we used to have a mullet, oh, we, 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 we move on from something, then what precedes it looks kind of ridiculous, you know? Uh, and the same can kind of happen in the spiritual life. When we, when we take a step forward, when we, when we learn something about the Lord, when, we, when something changes in our lives, something fundamental, something really important, there's kind of a, a mon- monumental shift in our lives, in our spiritual lives, we look back and we go, my goodness, what was I doing? Or what was I thinking? Or why, why on earth did I, did I live that way, pray that way, receive Holy Communion that way, justify that sin for so long? You know? And, and it's, actually, it's actually a good thing. It actually means we're making spiritual progress. Because it actually means we're, we're moving. We're moving. Um, it's very easy to settle into a kind of a spiritual stagnation, which uh, would generally accompany a kind of a spiritual minimalism. So just do the bare minimum to get by. You know, um, I have to go to Mass every week, so go to Mass every week. There we go. Spiritual life accomplished, fulfilled, and completed. Uh, and no kind of spiritual growth or development. There's no kind of deepening of my relationship with the Lord. There's no kind of ongoing conversion or an ever deepening of, of this unity that I'm supposed to have with the Lord. I've settled for an external sign. Important as going to Mass is, it, that's, that, that's part of our spiritual lives, not the sum total. Uh, our, our sum total should be a daily life lived with the Lord, a constant you know, praying constantly, living constantly in the presence of the Lord, not just half an hour given to him a week. So often when we make these spiritual steps forward, it's good to have a sense looking back of, of oh, what was I doing? I should have known that. I should have prayed better. I should have, should have relied on the Lord more. Uh, I should never have given in that way. And it's, it's, there's a healthy, to be careful here, there's a, a healthy way to look back at the way things were, the way things used to be, uh, with a sense of our own inability to accomplish things without God. And that's, that's, that's an important distinction there. You don't look back just with constant regret and say, oh my goodness, I'm just so bad, I'm so bad, I'm so bad, I'm so useless, I'm so terrible, I'm awful, I'm a hypocrite. I'm... That's, that's just, that's, that's, that's actually excessive self-focus. That's very self-absorbed. Uh, we look back and we see our mistakes and we go, Lord, Thank you for pointing that out to me. And thank you that your grace is sufficient for me. Thank you that you are enough to actually make a saint out of me. St. Teresa Luzio was uh, a, a wonderful saint for, well, she had a, an amazing command of the French language, which has obviously translated into English. Uh, but it's more her, her it's, it's the, the simplicity of her spirituality that's so beautiful. She saw, uh, she has little images when she went to uh, Rome to visit the Pope to, uh, in order to get permission to enter the Carmelites at, at the tender age of 15. Uh, she saw all sorts of different things, technology that she hadn't seen before. And she saw an escalator, right? An escalator. So you stand and it kind of brings you up, right? And she said, wow, this is like, this is like God's grace. You know, we can strive and push hard and, you know, work ourselves into the ground, kind of walking up these stairs, scaling a mountain. Or you can allow God's grace to carry you up. So she said, like, I'm... I'm, and she doesn't say this with any proud pride at all. She said, I'm confident that I can become a saint. Confident that I can become a saint through God's grace. You know, so again, a, a wonderful kind of simplicity uh, in, in her understanding. She had a, a profound spiritual experience where she said, all the great truths of religion, the mysteries of eternity, plunged into my, sto- into my soul a state of joy, not of this earth. I experienced already what God reserved for those who love him. And seeing the eternal rewards had no proportion to life's small sacrifices. The eternal rewards had no, as in were, were way beyond what we deserve. The eternal rewards had no proportion to life's small sacrifices. And so I wanted to love, to love Jesus with a passion, giving him a thousand proofs of my love while it was possible. 
just, uh, just, just beautiful simplicity in it, like, that what, what we're given, heaven, right, eternal life with God, is so beyond what we deserve. And in that context, in that place, in that reality of this just beautiful existence with God, all of life's sacrifices pale into nothingness. And we will not regret a single sacrifice, a single act that we have made out of love for him because we, we will be repaid a hundredfold, a thousandfold for all eternity. She says elsewhere, Oh, how happy I am to see myself imperfect. How happy I am to see myself imperfect and to be in need of God's mercy. So much even at the moment of my death. Right? She sees her imperfections, and then she knows that this, this, see, imperfections don't have the last word. It's good that we recognize our imperfections and balance that then with because I have these imperfections and these tendencies, I need God. I need his grace. I need his forgiveness. I need him to carry me. And that's, that's her little way, you know, becoming like a little child carried in the arms of his father. They were not, it's not, it's not a self-reliant spirituality at all. You don't count on your own ability to get stuck in and, and make this happen. We recognize our own inability and the supremacy of God's grace. That with him I can do this. With him I can do this. Now it does require me renouncing my will. And that's, that's, the, that's the, not so much the catch, but that's where it gets a little difficult. That is the difference between a saint and me, <laughs> a saint and, and where we are. Uh, but her little way, these, these things might sound a little trivial, but sanctity is lived where you are, how you are. Maybe in, in, there, are op, the possi- there are possibilities that one can become a saint in a kind of one fell swoop uh, or have a moment maybe where you have the chance to, to, to be a martyr or something. But generally speaking, our, our martyrdom is much more hidden. It's daily and it's in the small things. So St. Therese speaks in her autobiography, The Story of a Soul, about the, the daily little issues, problems, difficulties, challenges uh, of, of the convent. And like, I've told you this example before, but uh, how there was a sister, there was one sister who when she was praying, she'd have the rosary beads, right? So you can imagine, blessed sacraments exposed, right? Candles are lit, a little bit of incense, and then you've got this constant... From the sister behind, who was just constantly knocking the rosary beads off the kneeler, and like you just you'd imagine, like after five minutes, you'd be like, "Listen, just pick up the excess rosary beads in the other hand. It's not hard, <laughs> all right?" Or then, obviously, as older sisters, as they get a little more deaf, you have to, as they're praying behind you, like it would drive you spare. You know what I mean? This is my holy hour. Would you just, <laughs> you know? But this is, the, 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 these are the little daily martyrdoms, right? Small things, absolutely. Then there was, there was this one sister who no one can satisfy. You bring her a cup of tea, it's too hot, it's too cold, it's on the wrong saucer, it's, it was impossible to satisfy her. So you bring her whatever she asked for, it would be wrong. Then you go back and you, you get what she asked for, do the thing uh, uh, as she asked for it. And she'd never actually say thank you, which is finally, you know? So, and, and she would serve this sister even though it cost her the blood of her heart, as they'd say in Italian, you know. Uh, so, and she would serve her day after day. And then this, this sister said to her one day, she said, Sister Therese, I have no idea why you like me so much. <laughs> <laughs> because she served her with such love and such joy that this sister, who was, whatever, difficult, difficult, uh, had no idea that it was such a... a, a a small daily martyrdom to serve her because she was just so cantankerous. But she, was, she served her with such love that your one never knew. And this is it. Like, this, is, this is where the daily sacrifices are offered up. This is where sanctity is lived. All right? It's not in writing books or preaching in front of crowds or anything like that. The, the sanctity is lived in the daily ordinary things. Little things done with great love. Little things done with great love. Even uh, her explanation of prayer. How great is the power of prayer. I say very simply to God what I wish to say, 
without composing beautiful sentences, and he always understands me. For me, prayer is an aspiration of the heart. It is a simple glance directed to heaven. It is a cry of gratitude and love in the midst of trial as well as joy. Finally, it is something great, supernatural, which expands my soul and unites me to Jesus. Remember we spoke at the beginning of the year what, what prayer is. Prayer is unity with God. If, if prayer is good, it's uniting me to God. But again, you see, it's, it's all, it's, it's, it, it seems simple, and, and it is simple in a way. But what it, what it costs us is our will. That's the, that's the, the price. But it's a recognition. Remember that definition of humility, you know? True humility recognizes the truth of who we are and the truth of who God is. That's, that's, that's humility. The truth of who I am and the truth of who God is. The truth of who I am isn't that I'm, I'm, all, I'm not all bad or all sinful or all... But there are, there are things that need changing, absolutely. There are good things as well. There are things that I'm able to do, fine. That it's not a lack of humility to say I'm able to play guitar. I can play guitar. All right, I mean... I'm no Eric Clapton, but I can play guitar. All right? So that's, that's, not, that's not a lack of humility. Uh, the recognition of the truth of who I am and the truth of who God is. There are things that I need to change. There are areas that I need to grow in. There are uh, tendencies or thoughts I need to let go of, all those kind of things. And I can do so with God's grace because he is God. He is love. He is Father. I live in the palm of his hand. And there I lack nothing that I need. Nothing. And that kind of confidence is what St. Therese had. And that's what's available to us. It's the very same, we have the very same spirituality, if you will, that she had. Recognition of our own need for God. And that we don't get stuck on our own inability, imperfections and sins. No. Nope. We focus on God's infinite love, mercy and grace. And there we lack nothing. There we can be confident that the Lord can make out of us, even us, great saints and so we entrust ourselves to Saint Therese of Lisieux we pray for the realisation of this universal call to sanctity this call given by the Lord to each one of us be holy as your heavenly father is holy Amen <laughs>